Prakash Paswan, uh, the view in the studio seems to be, and of course, Smita Prakash and Sanjay Jha continue to be with us. Guru Prakash Paswan, the view in the studio seems to be, and this is the number, let me give you the number first, NDA 38, India Alliance 2, in your home state of Bihar. So the NDA has fallen by just one seat. Last time you had 39, this time 38. The India Alliance had one last time. Uh, they are now up to two. So by and large, it remains the same. The NDA vote share has also gone up by about a percent or so. But the view in the studio seems to be that the JDU of 2024 is phenomenally a drag on the NDA compared to what the JDU was in 2019. No, Zaka, a very warm good evening to you and uh, all your colleagues. I think it's very important to realize that uh, Historically, if you see, we have been in alliance with uh, JDU or the erstwhile Samta Party since 1995, only barring a couple of years when uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar went to Mahagad Bandhan. But more or less, we look sorted. And uh, what your opinion polls also suggest that 38 out of 40, if you would very well remember that we were 32 in 2014, we were 39 in 2019 and 38 uh, as of now. And I think uh, we still have a couple of weeks left before the first vote is cast. So we are affirmative, we are positive. Only today we saw how young and dynamic leader Mr. Chirag Paswan came out after meeting uh, our party president Mr. Jagat Prakash Nadda. And he has also said, he has also affirmed that the NDA under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and the NDA as one family. And you would also keep in mind that Bihar is a very particular case. Bihar is a caste conscious state. Bihar sees that recognition and representation is given to each and every single community. And that is the reason. 2014 and 2019, we have had resounding victory across Bihar. That is a sort of affirmation from the people of Bihar on the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi, on the leadership of Bharati Janata Party. So to have all the relevant stakeholders, Social coalition, we are well, formidable. I, I we think, are I think it's an interesting unparalleled. Point. We have Mr. Nitish Kumar. I think it's a very interesting point that Mr. Paswan is making. Look, there are three factors at play here. Number one is that the BJP obviously in Bihar has to go the extra mile to think in terms of caste inclusion. Remember what the plank has been that the BJP is opposed to a caste census. This yeah. is a state where the caste census results were declared. So the BJP actually starts with some room to make up as far as attracting and bringing on board caste that might be apprehensive about its prevarication on a census and therefore the future of no, quota to, politics. To answer Javed Sahib's point before I go to our yeah. other guest, Abhishek Jha of the JDU is also joining us. The JDU has a committed 20% vote bank. Even yes. in the Lok Sabha election of 2019, 22%. Yes. You can say, yes, there is the Modi factor, there is, of course, the winning horse factor, all of that. But there's a, anywhere between a fifth and a quarter of the vote that goes to the JDU. What about That's the last not going to December. What, what was the percentage of JDU? The, last vote, assembly share, assembly the, the vote share last was above 20%. Last assembly yes, election. in the last assembly election, in the 2020 yeah. assembly election, the vote share of the JDU was above yeah. 20%. So a fifth of the vote is not going to overnight just collapse. But let me ask uh, Abhishek Jha of the JDU. The view here, and which is perhaps why we don't know the final numbers yet, but the view seems to be that even in the seat-sharing negotiations, Mr. Jha, last time the JDU contested 17-17 to the BJP, it was an equal alliance. Right now, it seems to be that BJP will contest 18 and JDU will get 14, four seats less than last time. Even the BJP realizes, perhaps the JDU also realizes, it's not so much an equal alliance anymore. So much, so much water has passed. Uh, in the Ganga in these last four years? Whatever water has passed in Ganga, it is purified. It is not contaminated. So, uh, let's uh, wait for some time. Results will be out. Uh, how the seats are being shared in the NDA alliance. And I would like to add one more point. When JDU was not contesting with BJP in the 2014 uh, uh, elections, at that time also, the vote percentage of JDU was above 16%, which clearly signifies that JDU has own mass vote. And that's why we always form a very strong coalition with uh, whatever side we are. With BJP, we have a very strong and very firm and very natural alliance for a very long time. And uh, people of Bihar have witnessed this thing. Uh, they have given their... Uh, uh, votes to this uh, alliance so many a times and that's the reason why uh, Nitish Kumarji has been the Chief Minister of Bihar for a very long time when we were in alliance with the BJP and in the upcoming elections also with all due respect to the uh, mega opinion polls which you have published right now we feel, we assume 
and we are very much confident that this time we are going to have a very clean sweep last time we lost one seat and that seat was of kishan ganj but this time uh, we have a very strong strategy for that seat also and uh, definitely we are going to win that seat also so there will be a clean sweep in bihar okay. and uh, not a single seat will be given to the mahagathbandhan side or the uh, india alliance side okay uh, let me let me quickly bring in person. smita prakash good points made by uh, the jdu spokesperson here smita prakash but remember one thing and let's put this into perspective i think the bjp will be quite happy to be where it is right now in the nda in bihar given that campaigning is yet to begin seat allocation is yet to begin but Smita Prakash, the important point for the BJP is that it is looking at 370. It's not looking at 303. Bihar is supposed to be a state of growth for it, isn't it? And therefore, it needs to contest yes. more seats here than the JDU last time and win those. Is that going to be a challenge? That's the fundamental Wait. question. Uh, yeah so they only lost one seat rahul so anything uh, uh, less than that you talking about a challenge so if you're in so 49 you have 48 that's a challenge but the bjp wants to win 370 not 272 370 the bjp wants on its own yeah. and for the nda it has it's more ambitious it wants 400 so the what you are seeing now is that uh, the phenomenon between 2019 and 2024 in bihar is the phenomenon of tejas i think the rise of tejasvi is something that everybody has to wonder what it will impact upon uh, as far as uh, the the nitish factor is concerned i think his party is going to get swallowed up by the bjp in the years to come but that will play out more in the bihar elections not so much in the uh, 2024 general elections that's my view the other thing which i want to say is you know when we talk about kishan ganj when we talk about the muslim vote and things like that you're talking about i think 87% or something is the is the uh, is the hindu population of bihar you have the ram temple you have nationalism you have these uh, uh, these issues which the bjp is going to project and my my sense is that even in kishan ganj they're going to be talking about welfareism in the other places it could be the ram temple it could be nationalism and stuff like that but in this in this area it it, it is going to be welfareism and that's how they plan to work on areas where they are projected to be slightly weak sure. as far as uh, Uh, you know looking at bihar is concerned prashant kishore has gone on several channels where he spoken about the tejasvi phenomenon where i see tejasvi as you know going to impact on this election he feels that it's a thorn of uh, it's a it's a crown of thorns that uh, tejasvi wears and uh, the lalu yadav phenomenon the corruption thing was going to weigh him down i though i don't know bihar as well as yeah. prashant, prashant kishore uh, knows he knows let's, bihar let's ask i still resident, feel that uh, i don't think that's bihari here